Shalom Israel, giving all praise to the Most High and to His Son, Yahweh Shai. Today's class, we must constantly educate ourselves to succeed. We have to stop having faith in non-existent things and start to have faith in the things that exist. When the scriptures talk about faith, is the faith supposed to be in things that are things of ethereal plane and we must it don't truly it's not truly there and you know things that are just floating out in the ether or are we supposed to have faith in the things that christ has done for us here in our lives you know we have to understand that for us, in order for us to succeed in bringing forth the kingdom it, we have to educate our physical mind in everything that has to do with life there should be nothing in our lives that we do not know how to do without the assistance of another nation. You know, whether it comes into brushing our teeth, we should be able to brush our teeth without the assistance of another nation. We should be able to get our own bath water without the assistance of another nation. We should be able to clean ourselves with soap without the assistance of another nation. But as it stands now, we can't even tie our own shoes without asking for help from the other nations because we don't know how to make shoelaces. We don't know anything, you know. So in order for us to succeed in getting the kingdom, we cannot just put our faith in fake and floaty ethereal things. We have to put our faith in educating ourselves so that the Most High can work through us. Give me Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye children of Israel. So when it say, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, this is talking to our brothers here in the truth. When we read in this Bible, it's important, you know, like we've been iterating and iterating and iterating. It's important that when we read it, we apply it to ourselves and we don't attempt to apply it to somebody else. And that's one of the major issues and one of the major sicknesses in Israel is that we read the Bible in order to apply it to other people that we deem to be wicked. Read. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. See, he says, but the Lord will never have a controversy with another nation doing what another nation do. Why? Because they are not his people. When he has a controversy with the inhabitants of a land, it's because those are his people. And he has a problem with the way they are living their life. That's right. Or he has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because they're messing with his people. But it has to in involve and include his people. But too many times we have seen this scripture and say, oh, well, it's talking about the way that the white man worship the other gods. And it's talking about the way that the other nations are into idolatry. But he don't care about what they do. That's Read. Right. Because there is no truth. He say there is no truth. Now, one thing is every time we see this word truth, what do we think? We always think Psalms 119 and 142. Let's go to it. Psalm chapter 119 and one verse 142. He say, there is no truth in this land, so he has a controversy with it. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 142. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. He say, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth and thy law is the truth but what exactly is he saying when he's saying the law is the truth because when we think about this okay we're thinking about okay i just have to keep the sabbath day i got to keep my fringes on and i am in the truth you know i got to you know not steal from nobody and all of a sudden i am in the truth but give me malachi chapter 2 and verse 6 because it say there is no truth. That means that right now, even though we have fringes on, even though we we not stealing from each other, even though we keep in the Sabbath day, at this time, there is no truth. How do we know that? Because the Lord is still cursing us as a nation. That's right. Read this out. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. The law of truth. Was in his mouth. So it say the law of truth is in our mouths. Read. And it 
and iniquity was not found in his lips. No iniquity found in the lips. Read. He walked with me in peace and equally. See, we have to start walking in peace. But instead, we, we do too much yapping, yapping about war, 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 war. But when will we finally lay our burdens down and walk in peace? How can we build a nation that's based off of blood? Work it out. Every nation that is based off of blood must end by blood. That's right. Read. And did turn many away from iniquity. That is our job. What We have to get stop getting confused about what our job is. Our job is to turn the people away from iniquity. Not really much more than that. But we too often are trying to set ourselves up as kings. We're trying to set ourselves up as the rulers. We're trying to set ourselves up as judges. We're yeah. trying to do all this. Set ourselves up instead of doing the one job that was given to us to turn the many away from their sins. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So it says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So when it says there is no truth, there is no law, there is no knowledge. Yeah. There is no knowledge out here, man. You know, when it's saying there is no truth, that means the people don't know anything. They don't know anything about God's laws. They don't have any, have any knowledge about how to live their lives. Right. But read on. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. And then he's saying because the reason they don't have any knowledge is because the messengers the Lord has sent is not giving the people knowledge. The messengers that the Lord has sent is not, you know, really helping the people. They're giving their own philosophies. They're giving the way they think, but they're not giving true knowledge. Read. But ye <laughs> are departed. Out of the way. He said the people that are supposed to be giving the law, the people that are supposed to be giving the knowledge, the people that are supposed to be teaching the people how to live, they have departed out of the way. Read. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Because our people think because they're teaching them how to put fringes on, that they keep teaching them how to keep the law. But there's a lot more to the law when it comes to internally. And when you are a judge, you have to be able to see somebody internally to be able to properly judge, you can't just say, oh, well, he came to the Sabbath day, so he's in the spirit. That's right. He say, ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Read. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. And right now, we are doing that job. You know, we're not doing the sacrifices and things like that, taking care of the temple. But we do what the Most High God has put before us. we doing the job that Levi was supposed to do, teaching the people the word. Going out there to the highways and the hedges. Taking care of the school of the Most High God. These are the Levite job, and we've taken it on. Read. Therefore, have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people? See, why do you think we having so much drama in Israel today? If Israel had truth in the land, we wouldn't have this drama. Right. It's a because they departed out of the way. Therefore, have I also made you contemptible. And base before all the people. That's why these leaders in Israel getting shut down, getting getting accused of things, having people call us and tell us things about these leaders, is because the Most High is doing this to them. Read. According as ye have not kept my way. Read. But have been partial in the law. They say they've been partial in the law. They've been partial in the law. Now, the thing is, they thinking, okay, well... We, nobody can keep all the law. There's certain things we can't do, this, that, and the third. But you neglecting the inner things. They keep being partial in the law because they telling you to keep the Sabbath day. But then they see pride on you. They see arrogancy on you. They see lying on you. They see hatred on you. And they don't say a thing. That's right. That's right. And they allow it to happen. See, give me James chapter 2 and verse 1. Read this. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord, Shai, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? See, that's the problem in Israel today. We have the faith of Christ with respect of persons. And I'm going to show you how. Read this, Art. Right? For, for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring. Now, the thing is, we have a lot of brothers coming into the school. And they want to be Israelites. They want to put their fringes on. 
You know what I'm saying? They want to have their garment on. They want to come to the Sabbath day. They, they come to the assembly with a gold ring. Read. In goodly apparel. And in goodly apparel. But they'll come with all the outer things. But on the inside, they won't get themselves right. But they'll come in with all the outer things. And what do we do? All oh, brew, 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 brew. Brotherly love and unity, right? Read. And there came in also a poor man in vile remnant. But then you'll see a brother out there on the street that don't he don't have his fringes on. He's not interested in it right now. He's not interested in, in coming into the truth. He he has other things in his life. Vile raiment. You know what I'm saying? His garment is dirty and spotted. Read. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gray, gay clothing. That's what the problem is, is, is in Israel. We got too many brothers that got respect to the brothers that they see with the fringes on that still ain't got themselves right. But then they see a brother out there on the street that ain't got themselves right and don't have the fringes and treat him like garbage. But then they're going to treat the brother that ain't got himself right but got the fringes on like he like he's in the spirit. Right and it's saying you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. Read and say unto him. Read. Sit. Thou here in a good place. But you're supposed to be rebuking him. You're supposed to be telling him, hey, brother, you ain't no different than the brother out there on the street. Right. But instead, you reinforcing his pride. Now, when he come into the truth, he put some fringes on. Now, all of a sudden, he's a god. Now, all of a sudden, he's better than everybody else. Now, all of a sudden, he's on top, reinforcing his pride and turning him into a monster. When you should be letting him know he's the same, That's the right. same as the brothers and sisters out there. Right. Read. And say... To the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. And that's the way a lot of our brothers see brothers and sisters out there on the streets, like they servants and handmaids. That's right. Like they garbage, like they're like they're heathens of the other nations. That's right. That's the way a lot of our brothers see them, and that's why they treat them the way they do. They treat them like that because they see them as footstools. Read. Are you not then partial? In yourself. And so we have become partial in ourselves because of this prejudice that we have. I mean, damn, they're racist. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we say it all the time, but like you, you, you look at the brother over there with fringes on and you treat him a certain way. And then you see the brother without fringes on and you treat him a totally different way, even though they both on the same level. Read. And are become judges of evil thoughts. Become judges of evil thoughts. Read. Hearken, my beloved brother. Hearken, my beloved brother, and read. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? See, the thing is, the Most High God has chosen the poor of this world, the brothers that ain't got the knowledge that you got, the brothers that are, are struggling in the things that you're not struggling in, the brothers that are striving, the brothers that haven't fully come into the truth, the poor of this world, rich in faith, though. Because I'll see brothers out there with no fringes on, but man, all they want to do is please the Lord. That's right. They just don't know if this is the right thing to do. They just don't know. They got too many things on their mind. They're too distracted. But see, then you got brothers in here with fringes on, ain't even worried about the Lord. Ain't even worried about pleasing the Lord. Ain't even worried about changing their life. And then one other thing, too. Them brothers out there without fringes on, they got more knowledge than the people in here. That's right. They know how to work with wood. They know how to how to work the land. They know how to take care of animals. They know how to do their own trade. They have, some of them veterinarians, doctors, mathematicians, architects, engineers. But then we want to look down on them. Read. And heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. He say they are also heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. Give me 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. First Corinthians 1 and 18. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. Read. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. See, the thing is, who is this talking to? It say the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So who's looking us at us like we foolish? See, the other nations, they scared of us. They want to shut it down. That's right. Who looks at us like we foolish when we teach the things that we teach? 
it be the ones that want to make videos about us. You see what I'm saying? It be the ones that don't want to hear what we're trying to tell them. It, it be the ones that are leaders. It be the ones that are already established. These are Israelites that think that what we're preaching, the gospel of Christ, is foolishness. Read. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. But unto us which are saved through Christ, this, this gospel of peace, this gospel of love, this gospel of unity is is the power of God. That's right. This is power. Not that going out on the street corner and being like, lick my boot, lick my boot. That is not power. That is false power. That's right. That's fake. Because you can't really make anybody lick your boot. Bring it out. So when you tell somebody to lick your boot and they turn around and walk away, you ain't got no power. You see what I'm saying? Bring Read. It For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. He said he's going to destroy the wisdom that we grew up on in this truth. He's destroying that. Read. And bring bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. See, it's a prudent. Who are the people who, who believe themselves to be prudent? Is it not the people who find themselves reading through this Bible, thinking that they understand the Bible, it thinking that they understand the scriptures? It it's a he will bring to nothing that understanding of those so-called prudent. Read. Where is the wise? Where are those wise brothers? Are they putting in the same brick that we putting in? Where are the brothers who believe in their doctrine? Their doctrine so wholeheartedly they don't want to hear nothing else. Where are they? Read. Where is the scribes? See, who are the scribes? Are the scribes regular brothers out there on the street? Are the scribes uh, the false preachers? Are the scribes the UN, the United Nations? Who are the scribes? Are they not the brothers with fringes on, with garments on? Where is the scribe? Read. Where is the disputer of this world? In the disputer, don't we? Don't, isn't it a problem in our nation that we always want to debate? Bring it out. Having no knowledge, but always wanting to debate. Bring it out. Not truly knowing the history, but always wanting to debate history. Read. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? That's why this th that whole way of living, where you're debating and you and you always want to get somebody to lick your boot, and you always want to go out there and rebuke somebody. This has become foolishness to the brothers that really understand what the mission is. That's right. It's become foolishness. It don't mean nothing. Is not going to accomplish anything. Read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. That and it's letting you know this world of Israel, this world right now that we in, by the wisdom that we was raised on in this truth, don't really know God. It say that in the wisdom of God, the world by their wisdom didn't really know God. Read. It pleased God. By the foolishness of preaching. See, are they, hold up, let me ask you a question. Our people, when we go out to the street corners, and when we teach the people, and we do classes, are we really preaching, or are we rebuking Bring all it. the time? Bring it, out. Bring it out. You know what I'm saying? Are we really preaching love and unity and, and bringing the people, or are we always saying, you going into the lake of fire, you going to hell, you not going to make it to the kingdom, lick my boot, we going to put you, we going we gonna to put you in chains. That's all we know. But preaching, read. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Read. To save them. Hold on, what is our mission? To save them. What is our mission? To save them. Read. That believe. To save them that believe. That's right. How do we save them? How can we save them but to teach them how to save themselves? Bring it out. Would you rather give a man a fish or teach a man how to fish? That is our goal. Read. For the Jews require a sign. See, now the thing is, it's saying the Jews require a sign. Read. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Read. But the preach, but we preach Christ crucified. See, but we preach that Christ died for our brothers and sisters. So if he died for them, what is our mission but to go and, and, and get them and fetch them and fish them? Right. Read unto the Jews. Unto the Jews, read a stumbling block. What is it to our brothers? A stumbling block. So why would this be talking about TD Jakes when it say, "Where is the wise? Where is the scribe?" But then right down in verse twenty three, it say, "Unto the Jews, a stumbling block." Bring it out. That means it's telling you who it was talking to the whole time. That's right. That's right. So called Jews. That's right. Read and unto the Greeks foolishness. And unto the Greeks foolishness. Read. 
But unto them which are called. But unto them which are called. Read. Both Jews and Greeks. See, both of the brothers that believe themselves to be Jews and of the brothers that don't know yet, that don't believe themselves to be Jews. Read. Christ, the power of God. Christ has come for them both. Read. And the wisdom of God. Read on. Because the foolishness of God. See, the love, the foolishness, the love. Read. Is wiser than men. Is wiser than any kind of dispute, 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 dispute or debate or any kind of fake knowledge you can bring. The simple love of God. That's right. Loving on your brother, loving on your sister is wiser than any knowledge or dispute you can come to me with. Read. And the weakness of God. And see, what you think of as weakness, what you think of as weakness when we preaching, read. Is stronger than men. See, we are the we have the true strength, the true strength to be able to look at our brother and have forgiveness. That's right. To be able to look at our sister and say, "Sin no more." No one has cast a stone at you. Sin no more. See, but too many brothers go out to them street corners and cast stones. That's right. Too busy casting stones. Read. For ye see your calling, brethren. He said, "Ye see your calling, brethren." Read. How that not many wise men. After the flesh. See, not many wise men in this truth believe themselves to be educated in this Bible after the flesh. Read. Not many mighty. Not many of the brothers that are, are, are puffed up in the truth believe themselves to be of a high estate, high rank. Read. Not many noble. Not many ones that call themselves captains and officers and deacons. Read. Are called. See, not many of them are called. That's right. Not many of them are called. Read. But God hath chosen the foolish things. Of the world. See, the Most High God has chosen the ones that you was out there thinking you was rebuking, saying, God going to kill you, God going to kill you. He chose those foolish things, read, to confound the wise. That's what's going to start happening soon. That's right. Brothers that's been out there doing that to these people's man, pretty soon, they're going to be begging for food to the people that they was rebuking. That's right. They're going to see that same brother that they said the Lord was going to burn them in a lake of fire. And he got all the sheeps and the chickens in the land. And they're going to be like, brother, can we get some food? He's going to be like, hold up. You told me that Christ was going to kill me. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Read. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. He's chosen those things that we esteem as the lowest bricks to be the chief cornerstone. Right. That's why we have to go out there and we have to bid as many as we shall find. Read. And base things of the world. And the thing the, the people of our own nation of the lowest estate. Read. And things which are despised. Hold on. Things are which what? Things which are despised. Who are they despised by? Despised by us. Those people that are despised by us. Read. Have God chosen. Have you? God chosen. Read. And things which are not to bring to not things that are. Read on. That no flesh should glory in his presence. See, that's too much peep brothers and sisters glorying in their own flesh in his presence. That's right. Believing themselves to be something when they are nothing. Read. But of him are ye in Christ, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. And sanctification, sanctification and redemption. And redemption, read. That according as it is written, he that glorieth. He that glorieth, read. Let him glory in the Lord. That's what we spoke, glory in the Lord. Not glory in our own wisdom, our own knowledge, what we believe we have. We're supposed to be glorying in what the Lord has blessed us with. But give me James chapter 2 and verse 6. Read that. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. But ye have despised the poor. See, we have despised the poor. Read. But not rich men oppress. Do not rich men oppress you? Do not the people that are above you treat you the way that you treat your own brothers on the street? It's like a never-ending cycle. That's right. It's a, do not rich men oppress you? Read. And draw you. 
before the judgment seat. And then they want to judge you because you don't do certain things they want you to do and treat you like garbage. So what do we do? Stockholm syndrome. Okay. We want to go out there and do the same things to our own people. Read. Do not say blasphemy that worthy name by the which ye are called. And then the things that they do to you, don't we always say that it's blasphemy? Don't we always say this is a sin against God to treat us this way? But then we go out and we treat our own brothers and sisters this way. Bring it out. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. Read on. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. So if you fulfill this law of loving your neighbor as yourself, ye do well. Read. But if ye have respect to persons, you ye commit sin. See, this is sin. When you have respect to persons, you only want to deal with your brother right. that got fringes on. And then he may not even be your brother. See, too many, we, we use the word brother too loosely. You know what I'm saying? He may not even be your brother. He's just a guy you know. Bring it out. You just know he got a Hebrew name. So all of a sudden, he's your brother. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even proved himself. And then he constantly making these mistakes that's showing you, hey, he's not really about this truth. But then we want to have respect for him, but then have so much disrespect for our own brothers and sisters out there. So much disrespect for a brother that worked 14 hours a day to take care of five children just because he ain't got no fringes on. Now he's lazy. You see what I'm saying? No, no respect. Read. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. And are, see, we've been convinced of the law, but as still as sinners, though. We're convinced of the law. We're convinced we should put fringes on. We're convinced that we should keep the Sabbath day, but still as sinners, though. We haven't fully converted ourselves. Jump to verse 19. Verse 19. Read. Thou believest that there is one God. He say, thou believest that there is one God. Yeah, we do. We all believe there is one God, right? Read. Thou doest well. Thou doest well. Read. The devils also believe. Read. And tremble. So what's the difference between you and the devils? Bring it out. Because it say the devils, the deceivers, the people who lie, also believe and tremble. Work it out. So what's the difference between you and the deceiver? You got fringes on. A deceiver can wear fringes. Fringes, fringes don't burn their skin. That's right. They can put them on. It don't. It's not a holy cross that burn their skin. It's not holy water. They can keep the Sabbath day. It don't burn their skin to keep the Sabbath day. Work it out. So what makes you not a deceiver? We have to look at ourselves as are we really teaching the people or are we just taking advantage of the people? Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Read. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. Whosoever shall keep the whole law. Read. And yet offend one in one point. See, you thinking because you do all these things. But yet you offend in one point, read. He is guilty of all. You the same as that brother out there on the street. That's right. If you if you offend in one, you are guilty of all, just like that brother out there. Letting you know that, you know, how, how can two people in the dirt despise themselves, despise the other one that's in the dirt? You're both in the dirt. See, read. For he that said, do not commit adultery. Read. Said also... Do not kill. See, you're saying all these things. Keep the Ten Commandments, right? Read. Now, if thou commit no adultery. Now, if thou commit no adultery, read. Yet, if thou kill. Yet, if you don't want to keep this other commandment, read. Thou art become a transgressor of the law. And too many of our people have this issue. Where we have things in the law that we know we should be doing. And I, I can't stress it enough. It's not all just physical laws. Yeah. It's mental, too. You know you got a problem with pride. You know you have a problem with anger. You know you have a problem with lying. And you still haven't got over it. But you want to go around and blame somebody else and accuse somebody else and say somebody else is wicked. When you know you got a problem in your inner mind that you can't get over. Bring it out. Bring it See? Out. Read. So speak ye and do so. He says, so speak ye and do so. Read. As they that shall be judged. 
by the law of liberty. See, you're going to be judged by the law of Christ. That's right. Read. For he shall have judgment without mercy. Without what? Without mercy. See that? We got to remember. It say without mercy. Read. That hath shewed no mercy. So when you show no mercy to your people, you get judged without mercy. And that's what too many of our people, we believe that when we get to that judgment seat, you know what I'm saying? When we see Christ, I guess, that he going to have mercy on us because we went out to the street corner. Bring that out. But when you don't have mercy, he ain't going to have no mercy. That's right. Read. And mercy rejoices against judgment. But let me get Hosea 4 and 1. Let's go back to Hosea 4 and 1. Read that. Book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Read on. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So the Lord has a problem with us. Let's find out why. Read. Because there is no truth. See, there is no one really teaching the truth, really teaching what the laws are supposed to be inside of your mind. How are you supposed to change on the inner self to make yourself be good on the outer self? Read. No mercy. Hold on. There is no what? No mercy. Did we not just go over the fact that brothers are not showing any mercy? This is why the Lord has still has a problem with us to this day. This is why we can't have unity. This is why too many camps are getting shut down. This is why too many camps are splitting up. This is why no camps have land. This is why ain't nobody got no animals. This is why we don't have no, no property that we can say this is the Israelite community. This is why, because there is nobody teaching the truth and there is no mercy out there in Israel. Read. Nor knowledge of God Read. in the land. There is no Israel still to this day with fringes on, with keeping the Sabbath day, with the lack of pork in their bellies, still having no knowledge of who God really is because it's not about God to them. It's about what God can do for them. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's about how can this word give me what I want? That's the only thing we're looking for. When we read about them blessings, we don't care what we got to do. We just like, okay, you want to keep the commandments? Yeah, I'll do that. Just give me all that stuff in the blessings. Give me, give me Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. We don't care. Oh, you want me to put my fringes on? Yeah, whatever. Put the fringes on. Now give me the gold and the silver. That's right. That's all we care about. We don't care about the love of Christ. Give me James 3 and 17. And that's one thing we have to understand is that we some gold diggers. I mean, Bring they don't want to admit that one. They don't want to admit that one. As a nation, we have become gold diggers. That's right. We see the Lord has all the opportunity to give us all this gold, silver, everything. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to put them sprinters on real quick. Give me, let me get some of that gold. Let me get some of that respect. Break it out. Let me get some of that power to tell people to lick my boot. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all I gotta do is put a dress on. Yeah, let me let me get some of that respect as an Israelite woman. Let me get some of that. Break it out. Gold digging. Got no love for Christ. In it for the gold. Read. The book of James. Come on. Chapter three. That's the only verse thing. Verse seventeen. We look Read. But the wisdom. That is from above. Read. Is first pure. See, the wisdom that is from above, the wisdom that is from within you, the wisdom that come from inside of you, not, not wisdom that come from your hours of study and you think you broke down, you cracked the code, I cracked the code. You know what I'm saying? But the wisdom that come from true love is first pure. It's pure. It has no deviations in it. It's never going to change. And I'm going to be real with you about that. That's real talk. No matter how much we get out of this Bible, no matter how much we study, no matter what we bring out, yeah, the knowledge is going to change. Yeah, we're going to get more knowledge. But when it comes to the pure wisdom of what Christ is about, that will never change. That's right. It will never change. Why? Because it's pure. Read. Then peaceable, gentle. He say peaceable and gentle. Read. And easy to be Entreated. And easy to be entreated. Read. Full of mercy. Hold on. What are we supposed to be? Full of mercy. Read. And good fruit. We're supposed to be full of mercy and good fruits. Read. Without partial partiality. Partiality. Without partiality. 
That means we're not supposed to be partial to this brother, but then we don't like that brother. We're not supposed to be partial to this sister, but then we don't like that sister. Right that is not the way we're supposed to be. Whether they got fringes on or whether they don't. Right. We have to get that through our thick school. Read. And without yeah. hypocrisy. Without hypocrisy. Hypocrite. Wanting to look down on somebody else because they don't keep the Sabbath day when you don't even know how to keep the Sabbath day. Right not really. Right you don't buy or sell or cook or work, but are you really keeping it? You don't know. You don't, you don't even do the research. You just follow what somebody else told you. That's right. You just follow in tradition that was passed down. You don't even really know. You don't even know what the Day of Atonement is all about. You ain't never kept it. You know what I'm saying? You you might have fasted. Yeah, sure. But you're still holding a grudge from three years ago. Bring that out. You don't know. Bring it out. But you want to look down on somebody else. Read. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. It say the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that wish to make peace. Too many brothers, they got their eyes set on war. They got their eyes set on bloodshed. They got their eyes set on nuclear bombs. That's all they want. They don't want peace. They don't want happiness. They don't want the world to flourish. They want a nuclear wasteland. That's right. They want a nuclear winner. Just so they can say they was right. Give me Hosea 4 and 1. Let's go back. Read that out. Book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Read. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. See, we have to break it down. He has a problem with us. Read. Because there is no truth. Because ain't nobody teaching about Christ. Read. No mercy. There is no mercy for the brethren. Read. No knowledge of God in the land. Let's get the knowledge of God. Give me Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. Let's get some knowledge of God. What what do you really know about God? We like to joke and we like to be like, okay, you know, do you know what his favorite flower is? Or do you know what his favorite animal is? Or do you know what his favorite land is? But when you getting to know your wife, does her favorite color matter? I mean, to be real. I haven't asked my wife what a favorite, I mean, you know, I haven't asked a girl what a favorite color is since I was in middle school. No. So why is that the things we focus on? Favorite flower, favorite land. Who cares? That's not the stuff that matters. Work it out. What matters is how do you want me to love you? That's right. What are the things that really matter? How do you want me to treat you? See, read this, Ark. Book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Read. Come unto me. See, Christ said, come unto him. He inviting our people to come unto him. How do you come unto him? Can you come unto him physically? You have to come unto him mentally. That's through right. study, through increasing, through knowledge, through understanding, through expanding your mind. Come unto Christ. Read. All ye that labor. All ye that labor, read. And are heavy laden. See, the Lord say he know in the world when you are a fleshy man or woman, a woman of carnal, a man of carnal, he say you're going to be heavy burdened and heavy laden. Your struggles are going to be real. The struggle is real out there. Read. And I will give you rest. He say, but if you come and you truly learn of him, you will finally gain rest in your life. That's right. So for the brothers and sisters that have no rest in their life, constantly struggling, constantly got problems, constantly got things going on, it's because you have not come to Christ. It say Christ will give you rest. Read. Take my yoke upon you. See, the Lord say take his yoke upon you. Read. And learn of me. Hold on and do what? And learn of me. See, who has taken, him, taken on the, the true task of learning of Christ? Not learning of, of the precept that prove what you want to think. Not going in there and seeking out that precept that prove your doctrine. But truly learning what Christ was about. And getting to know him. Too many of us are getting to know the doctrine. Instead of getting to know him. That's right. Read. For I am meek and lowly in heart. See, he's even he's saying right here, he is meek and lowly in heart. But who of our people are meek and lowly? No, no, we ain't got them. Few, we got a few. 
But when you look at yourself, would you say you're meek and lowly? A lot of people, they look at themselves and say, yeah, I'm meek and lowly to Christ. I, I you know, I'm meek, I'm meek and lowly to Christ. But you, but you domineering and overbearing on your brothers and sisters. That's right. That's right. But you meek and lowly to Christ, though. You're supposed to be meek and lowly, period. Respect. That's right. Humble. Humility. Peace. Mercy. Read. And he shall find rest. Unto your soul. He say, you shall find rest unto your souls. Read. For my yoke is easy. He say, his yoke is easy. Read. And my burden is light. But let me get some. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 48. Because he say, if you come unto him, your yoke will be easy and your burden will be light. So why is it that Israel still got a heavy burden on them? Who is doing this? Who is doing this to our people to the point where they still, they coming in the truth. They seeking after Christ, but they still got a heavy burden on them. Read this for me, I. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. See, because our people's coming to this truth seeking after peace. Everybody did. No one came into this truth. I mean, I'm not going to say no one, but a majority of the people didn't come into the truth looking for war. They came looking for peace. They, they were struggling in their life. They had problems. They wanted some rest unto their souls. And when they came in, they was poisoned by the, by, the, by, the, by the tradition of what our people are, that everything should be bloodshed and war and, and damage. That's right. And, that, and it polluted what they truly wanted in their spirit. Read. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Verse 48. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So our peoples have become men servants, servants of man. But the thing is, our peoples don't care about Esau. We don't care about the other nations. You know what I'm saying? We go work for them. But who are you really serving, though? Right. When it say serving, that means dedicating yourself to Dedicating your life to dedicating your knowledge to who are you serving? A lot of people serving the elders, serving their leaders. That's right. Serving the people that's above them, serving the dude they think got that know the Bible. It say, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee. Read in hunger. See the thing is, you hunger. Let me get that hungry. Let me get that hungry. Give me Matthew chapter five and verse three. It say you was gonna serve them in your hunger. And your hunger. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Read. Blessed are the poor in spirit. He say blessed are those poor in spirit. The ones that are lowly looked upon. Read. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is for them. For the brothers and sisters that don't know as much, that aren't as highly elevated, the ones that just want to have faith, that just want to, that just want to live in peace. That's right. That's all they want. Read. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that are in mourning. Read. For they shall be comforted. That's our job. Our job is to comfort them. That's right. Comfort them in their pain. Yeah. Comfort them in their in their loneliness. Comfort them in their poor in their poor lifestyle. Instead of just driving them deeper into the dirt. Read. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Read on. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Read. For they shall be filled. But it say that when we curse as a nation, you're going to be hungering and your enemy is going to be the one feeding you. That's right. right. The one that you thought was your friend is going to be the one stabbing you in the back. That's right. We good on it. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, 48. Let's get some more because I want to get back to that. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Because I'm going to tell you something. Your enemy, the biggest thing they do is deceive you. So your enemy, who they going to tell you the real enemy is? They going to tell you the real enemy is that guy up there on the, in the president office. They going to tell you the real enemy is the guy over there behind the badge. That's right. When they the enemy. Right in your face. Deceiving you the whole time. Turning you away from the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Read. Book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. 
Verse 48. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Read. In hunger. See, in hunger. You hunger for that righteousness. So you got to go to them. You got to serve them for it. Read. And in thirst. You thirst for that word. You thirst for Christ. So you got to go to them for it. Read. And in nakedness. You want to put on the clothing, the garment of God. So you got to go to them for it. Read. And in want of all things. Everything that you want, you, you dedicate your life to these brothers that are supposed to be even guiding the nation. That's right. That's we right. dedicate our lives. And some of us, we find those good brothers. A lot of us don't. And they become our enemies. Right. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Then, we, we like to attribute this to slavery times. But too many of our brothers in the truth will use precepts in the Bible to put a yoke of iron on your neck. That's right. To, to weigh you down, to keep you in the dirt, we'll use this Bible. And that's become a blot in, in Israel. It's become a, a, a dark spot in the truth movement. Is that brothers will put yokes of iron on their own brother's necks. Read. Until he hath destroyed thee. Until he's destroyed you. Looking to destroy you. Give me 1 Kings 12 and 10. Let's get some more on that. Let's get some, some evidence that your own brother can be the one that puts a yoke on your neck. It is possible. It is possible that your own brother can be that one that put that yoke on your neck. Read this. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 10. The book of 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 10. Read. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him. See, these are the young men that grew up with Rehoboam as he was becoming king after King Solomon, right? So this is of our own people. Read. Saying. Thus shalt thou speak unto his people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy. You see, you say, Thy father Solomon made our yoke, our burden, the things that we had to go through heavy. Read. But make thou it lighter unto us. So they wanted them to make the yoke, they wanted the next king to make that burden lighter unto them. Read. Thus shalt thou say unto them, Read on. My little finger shall be thicker than my father's lion's loins. loins. So he wanted to say he was going to do even more than what his father did. Read. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke. With a heavy yoke. Read. I will add to your yoke. And that's one thing our brothers is making a mistake in doing. That's it's right. adding to the burdens. Brothers come into this truth looking for peace. And too many times, instead of taking their burdens away, we add more burdens. We add more weight onto the anchor around their neck. That's right. That's to make them sink even deeper. And that's something that's got to stop. Read. My father had chastised you with whips. He's saying the father chastised you with whips. Read. But I will chastise you with scorpions. scorpions. See, it'd be too often. Brothers got to go through this, that, that, and the third out there. And then they come into their into they congregation. And they got to go through more. They got to go through worse. They got to go through brothers looking down on them. Brothers talking dirty to them. That's right. Brothers saying this, this. Brothers talking behind their back. That's right. They'd rather go back into the world. Because at least in the world, they fire you. They're not just going to talk behind your back and treat you like they're going to fire you. That's right. At least out there. That's one thing we have to get away from. Give me Lamentations 1 and 14. Let's get some more on it. Lamentations 1 and 14. Book of Lamentations. Chapter 1, verse 14. Read. The yoke of my transgression. See, the yoke of sin. Read. Is bound by his hand. See that yoke of sin? Brothers, when when young when new people come into the truth, new brothers, new sisters, we want to lay this that all these sins on them. 
You not doing this. You not doing that. You supposed to do this. You supposed to do that. Putting, making their life into hell instead of allowing them to grow and increase and love Christ. That's why brothers and sisters that come in, they start to hate Christ. That's right. Because it's too much. Instead of allowing them to come into the love of Christ, read. They are read. Yeah. And come up upon thy my neck. Read. He hath made my strength to fall. The Lord hath delivered me unto their hands, from whom I am not able to rise up. And see, they're not able to get out of that situation because that's just where they ended up. That's right. They don't know anything else. Give me Hosea 4 and 2. We have to get to the point where we start relying more on gaining knowledge than following tradition. That's right. Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. And sin touches sin. Never truly changed. The old self is the same as they knew self. That's right. It just got a Hebrew name. Because they still commit these same things. Read. Therefore shall the land mourn. Therefore shall the land mourn. Give me Proverbs 29 and 2. Therefore shall the land mourn. Why? Why is the land mourning? Proverbs 29 and 2. Why are the people still sad? Why are the people still mourning? Why are the people still suffering? Why are the people still cursed? Why are the people still going through the things they're going through when we're supposed to be in the truth? That's right. Read. Book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 2. Read. When the righteous are in authority, Read on. the people rejoice. See, when the righteous are in authority over the people, everybody rejoices. Read. But when the wicked... Rule. But when the wicked are in authority, read the people mourn. That's why the people are in mourning still, because the wicked are in authority. That's right. We have wicked brothers in authority. Go back to Hosea four and two, four and three. Book of Hosea, chapter four, verse three. Read. Therefore shall the land mourn. The land mourns. Read. And everyone that dwelleth therein. Shall Everyone that dwelleth among us in Israel is languishing. Why? Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. Why are they languishing? Why are they still feeling that, that pain? Why are they still going through that mental anguish when we should be at peace as a nation? That suffering should be ending through Christ. Read this, Ark. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Read. Judah mourneth. Judah mourns. Is mourning right now. But we're supposed to be at peace, though. We're supposed to be happy, though. That's right. Read. And the gates thereof languish. And the gates thereof are languishing. See, that gates, that gates is supposed to be leadership. It say the leadership is lacking. Read. They are black unto the ground. See, they are cursed. They are cursed unto the ground. Read. And the city of Jerusalem. The cry of Jerusalem. Read. Is gone up. Is gone up. Read. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. See, and we've sent our little ones to the waters, man, to get the knowledge, to get the understanding. Read. They came to the pits. They came to the pits, the dry pits. Read. And found no water. Found no, wa no water, no knowledge, no understanding. Read. They returned with their vessels empty. And that's why so many people are, are leaving the truth. Returning back into the world with empty vessels. Read. They were ashamed. Ashamed. Read. And confounded. Read. And covered their heads. Bringing our people to shame. Read. Because the ground is... Chaps, 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 no water, no knowledge, read. For there is no rain in the earth. There's no rain in the earth, read. The plowmen were ashamed. The brothers that are supposed to be going out there and, and doing this work for the people have become ashamed, read. They covered their heads. They covered their heads, read. Ye 
The hand also carved in the field. The hind calved in the field. The hind gave birth in the field. Read. They forsook it. And then forsook it. Read. Because there was no grass. And see, with a hind calved, brothers and sisters coming into this truth and being forsaken by the people that are supposed to be leading them. That's because right. there is no grass for them. There's nothing for them to feed on. They can't feed them nothing. They say, okay, well, now you know we you saw the devil, and that's about it. And there's nothing they can do for him. Well, what do we do when, the, when there's no more food? Well, we're supposed to just have faith in Christ. And there's nothing they can do for him. No grass for them to feed on. Give me Hosea 4 and 3. Look at Hosea, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Therefore shall the land mourn. Shall the land mourn. Read. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Everyone is lacking that leadership, lacking that guiding force. Read. With the beast of the field. Well, hold on. Who are we with now? With the beast of the field. Those brothers that are that are lacking that leadership, that are mourning, are now going to perish with the, with the other nations. That's right. Because they're not any different from the other nations. They know just as much as the other as the other nations know we the kings on the planet. They know they're supposed to be our servants. They know that the Lord blessed us. They know we under curses because of our wickedness. That's we right. they know the same thing we know. Right. So what are you doing with that knowledge though? Bring it out. Read. And with the fowls of heaven. With the fowls of heaven, read. Ye, the fishes of the sea. Yea, with the fishes of the sea. Read on. Also shall be taken away. Read on. Yet. Let no man strive, nor reprove another. See what it's saying right there? It's saying, yet through all these things, let no man strive, nor try to reprove another. Read. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Hold on, what do our people do? Strive with the priest. What do our people do? Strive with the priest. They want to they combat and they want to argue with the men the Lord set up to guide the nation. That's right. See, is that not our people? Th thy people are as they that strive against the priest. Give me Romans chapter 2 and verse 1. <laughs> Romans chapter 2 and verse 1. Read that. See, it say, our people are as, they, as those that strive against the priest. When will our people begin to recognize that it is the priest and stop thinking of them as the enemy or stop thinking of the brother that's trying to help them as the brother that's trying to hammer that nail into the ground. That's right. But then the brother that's trying to hammer you into the ground, you want to treat him like your friend. See, read. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Therefore, thou art inexcusable. Inexcusable. See, it say thou art inexcusable. Read. Oh, man. Whosoever thou art that judges. So we don't, when we're reading this, we tend to skip over this. It say, whosoever thou art that judges. Whosoever thou art that judges, you are inexcusable. You don't have any excuses. But too many brothers are going to, they're going they're gonna, to uh, think of excuses in their mind of what, why they did this, why they do that, why they believe this, why they think that. It's saying you have no excuses because you are a judge. Read. Or wherein thou judgest another. Where, whatever, however you judging another person, read. Thou condemnest thyself. You better be exceeding what you judging them by. If, if, uh, if you hating on somebody because they talk to you crazy, you better never in your life talk to anybody else crazy. That's right. Never in your life. You better make sure everything you say is on point to everybody you talk to. Because if you don't, the Lord going to hate on you for talking crazy. You see what I'm saying? But too many times somebody comes to us say something and we just. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And we don't we don't even think about the fact that we can't even be perfect, but we want them to be perfect. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Read. For thou that judges does the same thing. He say when you judging 
and you hating on somebody and you looking at what somebody else doing and you don't even realize you do the same thing. That's why some brothers be having road rage. That's right. Somebody come and cut them off, man, they get to, uh, and then while they get into getting that rage, they cut somebody else off. Don't even know you, you doing the same thing. Read. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Is according to truth, read. Against them which commit such things. It's against you. When you're doing these things, this word is against you. That's right. That's why you can't really teach it the way it's supposed to be taught, because you know it will condemn you. Read. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same. Read. That they shall escape the judgment of God. And that's what our brothers got to get out of their mind. That somehow, some way, when they doing this right here, that they going to escape judgment of God. Because they think it because they have survived this long, that judgment is not coming for them. It's not up to us. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's up to the Lord. Judgment will come. Read. Or despises thou the riches of the goodness and forbearance and the long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Give me verse eleven. Verse eleven. Read. For there is no respect of person with God. You think the Lord is looking at you even though you got this wickedness on you and he proud of you? Do you think that's the case? Bring it out. Because it say the Lord is no respecter of persons. While you think he looking at you, he also looking at the other 12,000 brothers over there that got more faith in him but ain't wearing their fringes. He also looking at them. That's right. So what makes you special? Brothers think they special. Bring it out. They think that they're the apple of God's eye. Read. For as yeah. many as have sinned without law. Have, as many as have sinned without the law that are still out there in that world, read, shall also perish without the law. Yeah, they're going to perish without the law. Read. And as many as have sinned in the law, but you, brother, that have sinned in the law, read, shall be judged by the law. You're going to the same place they are. That's right. you right there in the same boat they in. Just because y'all on, on the other side of the, of the field don't mean you're going to any different place. That's right. Read. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Just because you hear the law of the mind, of the spirit, of the soul. Read. But the doers of the law shall be justified. But you also got to enact it in your life and change the fundamental way that you think about your brothers and sisters. That's right. It has to change. Too many of us hate in our GGAs, in our minds. You know what I'm saying? Bring that up. We real, real talk, we've become just like the other nations. When it comes to looking at our people in the mind, we saying, Nip. we saying the N-word. Bring it up. When we see our own people. That's right. That's what we've become. Read. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, read, do by nature the things contained in the law. See, when our brothers and sisters out there in the truth that, that are not in the truth, that don't understand the law, but in their nature, in their faith through Christ, they still are doing the things contained in the law. Read. These having not the law. Read. Are a law unto themselves. See, they got more righteousness than you do. Because their spirit is right. That's right. They may not have the physical thing. They don't know the, the physical things they're supposed to do, but Dang it, if they don't love their brother, if they don't love their sister, if they don't love Christ, read. Which shew the works of the law They written. shew the works of the law, read. In their hearts. Written in their minds. It's already in there. It was ingrained deep within them, in their spirit. Now all they need is some fringes and they in it. They already, they good. But you, you got the fringes and you need, you need a whole overhaul. That's right. Your whole body work needs to get overdone. Your whole engine needs to get replaced. But you got fringes on them. Read. Their conscience also bearing witness. Read. And their thoughts. The meanwhile accusing or else excusing 
one another. Read on. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Yahweh according to my gospel. He said he going to judge the secrets within you by Christ. That don't mean he, he didn't say he's going to judge you by you went to the Sabbath day that one time. He said he's going to judge the secrets within you. Give me Zechariah chapter. Matter of fact, give me Hosea 4 and 5. Look at Hosea chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Therefore shall that fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall. In thee in the night. See, it say, thou shalt fall in the day because you haven't learned of Christ. Right. Because you haven't put on his yoke. And then it say, the prophet that's been leading you shall also fall with thee in the night. Read. And I will destroy thy mother. And then he gonna destroy that doctrine you've been following. That's right. He gonna destroy it. Read. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. See, and he's saying, my people, my people, whether in the truth whether out of the truth, the chosen people of God are still destroyed to this day because we have no knowledge about anything in this world. We're a bunch of babies running around. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. But because we reject to learn anything more, we reject it. Read. I will also reject thee. That's why brothers are getting rejected still to this day. Nobody should be getting rejected. We in the truth, right? That's right. Then why are brothers still getting pushed out into the world, rejected? Because they're rejecting knowledge. Give me Zechariah 7 and 11. It don't make no sense for brothers and sisters to still be getting rejected. If we, if we so-called are in the truth. Everybody should be getting that one-way ticket to the kingdom. If we was teaching the right doctrine. But because there's so much pollution, that's why we still have things go drama. Drama going on. Read. Book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. But they refused to hearken. Who is this talking about? It's a we refuse to hearken. It's a they refuse to hearken. It's talking about us. We still in this truth are still refusing to hearken. Read. But pulled away the shoulder. But we pulling away our shoulder from the, from the elder reaching out to the peoples. The deacons reaching out to the people. The captains going on expeditions to other cities and states, reaching the peoples, they have turned their shoulder away from us. Read. Stop their ears. And they've stopped their ears. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the advancement of the truth, the growing. Read. That they should not hear. They don't want to hear. Read. Ye have made their hearts as an adamant. adamant stone. They've made their minds as a stone. You can't teach them nothing. You can't change the way they think about nothing. They don't want to hear it. Read. Least they should hear the law. They, but lest they should hear the true law. They don't want to hear the true law. They want to stick with what they know, those five commandments they know to keep in the Old Testament. That's it. They don't want to hear the true law. Read. And the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. It say the words which the Lord of hosts sent in the spirit by understanding the former prophets. You can only get this word through the Spirit. That's right. Not through you reading the words and thinking you got it. Only through the Spirit. Read. Therefore, come a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. That's why great wrath is still hitting Israel to this day. If we was all in the Spirit, keeping the commandments, doing our thing, we would have a 100,000 acres of land by now. If we was. But because we still cursed, that's why we have nothing. That's right. If all the Israelites came together and put, we, we probably couldn't do nothing because we'd still be cursed. Nothing would come forth. Read. Therefore, it is come to pass. Read. That as he cried, and they would not hear. Read on. So they cried, and I would not hear, that the Lord of hosts. See, that's why we still have prayers not being answered. That's right. The Lord say, ask, and he shall do it for you. Jump, give me Isaiah 6 and 9. But we asking, and the Lord is not provided. Why? Because brothers are still in sin. Brothers don't want to change. Brothers don't want to repent. That's why the Lord ain't answering our prayers. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 9. 
Read that. Book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 9. Read. And he said, Go and right. tell his people. Read on. Hear ye indeed. They hear. Read. But understand not. But they don't understand what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to bring forth. Read. And see ye indeed. See ye indeed. Read. But persevere not. Perceive. They don't understand. They see it, but they can't actually turn it into something that they can do something with. Read. Make the heart of his people fat. See, they've made the minds of the people in Israel with fringes on fat. They've become fat with their own pride, with their own glory, with their own reveling in their own what they and what the people glorying in them. They become fat. Read. And make their ears heavy. And their ears have become heavy. Read. And shut their eyes. And their eyes have become shut to any advancement into the next stage. Read. Least they see with their ears. Lest they eyes. should see with their eyes, read. And hear with their ears. And hear with their ears, read. And understand with their heart. And understand with their mind, read. And convert. And change the way they live in their life, read. And be healed. But that's why Israel still has not been healed to this day. That's right. It's because our peoples do not want to see and hear and understand. They want to continue to live their life the way they've been living. Give me Hosea 4 and 6. That's why we become stagnant. Because Israel don't want to learn anything. We don't want to educate ourselves. We don't want to step up to the next level. That's why we just stagnant. Read. Book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Read on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Read on. I will also reject thee. Read. Thou hast, that they, thou shall be no priest to me. That's why the Most High God say, our, a lot of our peoples are not allowed to be a part of that, a part of this covenant. That's right. A part of this teaching, a part of this next evolution, because they've rejected knowledge, because they've rejected to increase themselves. That's why they shall not be no priest to the Lord. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. You've forgotten that law, that law that you was born with, the law that drove you to the truth. You got driven to the truth because you wanted brotherly love and unity, but then you became the monster you are today. That's right. You've forgotten the law of God. Read. I will also forget thy children. He said he won't go forget you and all the people under you. Read. As they were increased. As you were increased, read. So they sinned against me. The more you increased, the more you decided you was okay with sinning against God. Read. Therefore. Will I change their glory? He gonna change your glory, read. Into shame. Into shame. Read. They eat up the sin of my people. Read on. And they set their heart on their iniquity. See, they, they, they glory in the fact that the people are still in sin. Why? Because as long as the people are still in sin, they still reliant on that brother. That's right. Or on that, what they, who they call their leader. They still reliant on them. Read. And there, and there shall be like people. Like people read. Like priests. They, the priests and the people going to be the same. And whatever sin that priest in, the people going to be following suit. Read. And I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doing. Give me Matthew 15 and 12. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 12. He say like the people like the priest exactly the way your priest your leader your the person that's above you behave these are the same sins that's going to trickle down to you read the book of matthew yeah. chapter 15 verse 12 read then came his disciples and said unto him read on knowest thou that the pharisees were offended after they heard this saying see the pharisees was the, the 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 top people who knew the law, would enforce the law, you know, were the people that tried to rule over the people, believing that they was following God. They say the Pharisees are offended when we say these things. Read. But he answered and said, Read every plant, every plant, read which my heavenly Father hath not planted, which the Lord hath not planted, read, shall be rooted up. That's why a lot of camps and a lot of leaders are getting rooted up. 
That's right. That's right. A lot of that stuff is getting rooted up. When you're seeing somebody get rooted up, it's because the Lord has not planted it. Read. Let them alone. Let them alone. Read. They be blind leaders of the blind. See, when just like the priests, that's how the people go be. That's right. Blind leaders of the blind. Read. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. That's why a lot of our people are getting called out. Called. Separating the sheep from the goats. That's right. Give me Hosea 4 and 10. But the, but the Lord say it has to be done. You know, you have to separate them. We want all of we our, our, our heart's desire is that all Israel shall be saved. But that's not the way it's going to be. Read this. Book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 10. Read. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall eat, but they will not have enough. They shall continually try to learn this word, continually seek after the knowledge, but never have enough. Read. They shall commit order. They should, but then they shall give in to their sins and to their lusts. Read. And shall not increase. And then they'll be stagnant, never increasing. Read. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Give me Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Haggai, right after the book of Zephaniah. After the book of Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and then Haggai. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. It say, because they have left off following the Lord, they shall consume, but they shall never be filled with the word of God. Never be filled with the spirit that the Lord blesses through understanding him. Read this, Ark. Right? Book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. Read. Now, therefore... Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Read on. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Look upon your ways. Read. Ye have sown much. It say you have sown much. You have put in much work. You have put in much brick. You have put in much time. Read. And bring in little. But you haven't really increased. Why? Why have you done all this and yet you have not increased in the spirit? Why? Read. Ye eat. Ye eat. You consume, you read, you study, you seek, read. But you have not enough. But you still have not enough. Why? What are you doing wrong? You see what I'm saying? You haven't given yourself fully over. That's right. You're not, you're not following Christ, following a man. You're following a doctrine. Instead of following Christ, read. You drink. You drink, read. But you are not filled. With drink. But ye are not filled with Christ. Read. Ye clothe you. You put on the doctrine that you've been taught. Read. But there is none warmth. But there is no warmth in that doctrine. There is no mercy, no love, no unity in that doctrine. Read. And he that earneth wages. And he that earneth that penny to the kingdom. Read. Earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Constantly falling short. Every time you think you earn that penny to the kingdom. The next day you commit some type of sin, you feel like you're in the dirt. That's right. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Read. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Read. Go up to the mountain. Go up to the mountain. Read. And bring wood. Read. And build the house. Come and build the house of the Lord. Come and build the house. Read. And I will take pleasure in it. And the Lord will take pleasure in you. Read. And I will glorify. I will be glorified. Read. Saith the Lord. Read on. Ye look for much. You look for much. Read. And lo, it came to little. And lo, it still come to little, man. Read. And when you brought it home. And when you brought it home, read. I did blow up on it. The Lord blew upon it. Destroyed what the little you had to bring home. Why did the Lord do that? Read. Why? 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 Why did he do that? Read. Saith the Lord of hosts. Saith the Lord of hosts. Read. Because of mine house. That is waste. Because the Lord's house is not being built. Read. And ye run every man unto his own house. But everybody worried about his own life, his own garbage, That's his right. own drama. And the Lord's house is falling apart. The Lord's house here in Israel is falling apart. That's right. And nobody cares. If, if Israel really cared about the Lord's house, they would have came to the table. And they would have came and they would have spoke with us and linked up with us. And we would have a unity. We would have true unity. But because nobody cares about the house of Christ, everybody only cares about their own camp. That's right. Everybody only cares about their own house. That's right. Read. Therefore, 
the heaven over you is stayed from doom. Because you only care about your own camp and your own life and your own house, that's why you don't increase in knowledge. That's why you're not getting the understanding. Read. And the earth is stayed from their fruit. And the earth is stayed from her fruit. Read. And I called for a drought upon the land. He said he called for a drought upon the land. No water. Read. And upon the mountains. And upon the mountains. Read. And upon the corn. Read on. And upon the new wine. See, the new wine ain't no ain't no good. It ain't no good. The new wine is garbage. That's right. The new wine is not feeding the people. Right. Read. And upon the oil. Read. And upon that which the ground bringeth forth. Read on. And upon men. And upon cattle. And upon all that labor of the hand. That's why you labor much. And little comes out of it. Because nobody cares about the Lord's house anymore. That's right. Give me Hosea 4 and 11. Last precept. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 11. Look at Hosea chapter 4, verse 11. Read. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. It's saying whoredom, your sins, and that doctrine, and that new way that, the, that everybody wants you to live, that new doctrine, that new understanding is what's taking away the minds of our people. That's right. Whoredom and wine and new wine is taking away the hearts and the minds of our people. We have to get out of that. We have to come into learning about Christ, increasing our minds, increasing our education, increasing the more we know about this world. That's right. Too many brothers still thinking we're going to get lifted up into the kingdom of heaven. Look it out. Instead of understanding we're going to have to make the world, most of this world we have here. That's right. So on that, reach out to us. You know, come and grow with us so that we can go into the next level and reach the next level what Israel is supposed to be. Well, now we say shalom. Shalom.